Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Chapman, founder and wealth advisor at X Squared Wealth Planning, where I help entrepreneurs take control of their income and build their wealth and their business with joy and with ease. And today, having just come off of uh, tax season in the US, I wanted to talk about how do we prepare for taxes next year? Because if I know anything from working with lots and lots of entrepreneurs and business owners, it's that somehow taxes can always be a surprise. Um, even, you know, even when you know every single year you're going to pay taxes, somehow it still can feel surprising when you get there. So how then do we prepare on the front side so that you're not surprised and taken aback by that $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 tax bill in April. So first of all, I am a certified financial planner. I'm a CFP and I am licensed to give investment advice and those, those types of things. I am not a CPA. I am not a tax preparer. So this is general advice in order to prepare you to be able to pay your taxes easily. This is not specific advice um, for any one person. So if this prompts questions, which I hope it does, I want that to be um, the starting point for a conversation about what's the right amount for you to be saving so that you are preparing for taxes throughout the year. When you talk to your financial advisor, your tax preparer, all of those uh, important people in your financial life. So let's talk a little bit about what it can look like uh, when you understand what your financial situation is well enough that you can actually be ready for that tax bill. Um, because especially with um, any big growth phase, this is where I see the issues come up the most, is when we have a growth phase in our business and we start making more income than we're used to, that's where you know tax time at the next year, oh, whoops, we did not prepare for that um, adequately. Versus, you know, if you're used to, you know, making in that two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar range, you have your deduction set. You know, like if that's your norm, you know, you can kind of prepare for that. So I want to give um, an example so that you know that th this is possible for you too. So I have a client who um, made roughly two hundred and forty thousand dollars total last year. She had saved throughout the year. Um, you know at the rate that we had figured out that she needed to. Um, and then when we got to tax time, she got all her deductions done. We went through all of, you know, everything with the tax preparer and it came back with, Hey, you owe $30,000 in taxes because you made so much money last year. A little bit of a tough pill to swallow still, you know, anytime we see that, you know, like, well, okay. But instead of, you know, having a panic moment and feeling like, ah, this is not going to be okay. She had already prepared for it. She had the money set aside in her, in her business savings account. And not only that, we had also prepared during the year to make a SEP IRA contribution. So when we got the information back from the tax preparer, I said, okay, based on her income, what is the maximum amount she can put into her SEP IRA? so that we can lower the taxes and so she can, you know, put that money that she's already saved. It's already there and ready. We just need to transfer it over to her SEP IRA account. Um, it turned out that was just over $21,000. So, hey, we already did that. We already prepared for that. So let's move that money straight over from one account to the other. And what that did was lowered her tax bill by more than $5,000. Um, or about $5,000 so that she ended up owing less. She already had that money ready. She also already had her retirement savings ready to put away once we knew the amount that she was allowed to put into her account. And so that really is an I ideal situation, right? Where you are in control of your income, you are able to do the things that you want to do throughout the year. 
um, but you have set aside the right amounts in the right places so that when we get to tax time, it's not an emergency situation. Um, so what that looks like for a generalized recommendation is create an account that's set aside for tax savings. And so the biggest recommendation I can give for this, set aside your tax savings. Every month when you reconcile, um, however you get paid, whether that's you get paid you know, contract by contract and you get large lump sums, um, or if you are on a recurring payment type basis, subscription type basis, where you get a fairly equal amount each month um, from your clients, whatever your business model is, when you reconcile, each month, make sure that you're carving off an adequate percentage for your taxes and putting it into a separate savings account that is not, you know, not for anything else. Um, this can take a little bit of practice. And, you know, the goal is that as you are doing this, say you do go through a big growth phase. If you've been, we'll give an example of 15%. If you've been carving off 15% every month when you reconcile, take 15% and put it in your tax savings account, that percentage as you ramp up, if you go from earning $15,000 a month to $25,000 a month, we'll say, keep your percentage and you know that will build the tax account faster. $25,000 a month to $50,000 a month. Again, you know, do do the percentage um, at on on your gross. So 15% of $25,000 and then 15% of $50,000. And that is going to at least get you in the right ballpark, right? Assuming this is a big uh, part of it, making sure that as you have those big leaps, you are going back to talk to either your CPA or your financial advisor, whoever it is that's helping you prepare for things along the way. Um, because you don't want to come back, you know, in March or April of next year in 2023 and then find out that you owe way more than you have in the bank to pay right? That's such a frustrating situation to be in. Instead, if you've got a system in place already, hey, you know, if you have to change the percentage from 15 to 20%, that's fine. You've already got the habit in place of uh, putting some away for taxes and having it stay safe. Step two of that to supercharge that even more is, like I said with my client, to also save on the front end. Know what your goal is for retirement or whatever your savings goals are. Know what that is on the front end of the year so that you are, you know, saving through the year for that goal. And then once you get to tax time and you know, you know, what you can save, again, there are different options here for savings, but we're just going to use this SEP IRA as as one example, um, because it works pretty well, especially for solopreneurs. Once you know what your total income was for the year, that's when you can determine what your SEP IRA contribution can be. Um, and if we've already set it aside, if you've already put it away into you know some sort of savings account for the year, that's that powerful piece of, hey, lift it out, put it into the SEP IRA. You just you know lowered your tax bill by whatever amount you were able to do. Um, and it's like a win-win situation. You've already got the money there and now you get to lower your taxes and utilize that extra money. In my client's case, it was about $5,000. Utilize it for something better than paying taxes, you know, just paying extra taxes um, than you need to pay. So I hope that little piece of advice of carving off um, a percentage every single time you reconcile into a tax savings account um, sparks an idea for you and helps you know that you can prepare for taxes on the front side um, and make just make sure that you're all happy and whole come next April uh, in 2023. If you don't have that you know financial advisor that's helping you plan and understand how your business works and how it um, combines with your personal finances so that you can make these types of, you know, 
planning pieces ahead of time and set aside the right amounts, I would love to talk to you. I love working with entrepreneurs, especially those with multiple businesses, multiple income streams, you know, those those complicated, complex situations that really re require um, more eyes to help you, you know, make decisions that make sense for every piece of your financial situation. So if that's you, feel free to um, contact me at the contact information listed below. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I hope you have a wonderful, awesome year.